What a packed house we got tonight for this edition of the Drew Pearson Show. <laughs> We're at Henry's Tavern. Welcome back for another segment. We got a great show again lined up for you tonight. Let's meet my co-host right here, Kelly Webster. Welcome, Kelly. How are you Thank doing? You, Drew. I'm doing great. Looking forward to tonight. Oh yeah, we got a nice night. Got a packed house here at Henry's Tavern, where we always tape the Drew Pearson Show on Mondays. It's at the Shops at Legacy, right here in Plano, just off the tow road. You got to come check it out. All kinds of big screen TVs, all kinds of people hanging out, and the home of the original 88 Drew Pearson Burger. So have you tried that yet, Miss Kelly? I have not, but I have had a burger, and it was fantastic. So were the fries, so were the sides, so was the coleslaw, so was the pulled pork sandwich, and so was the beer. I just Darn it, you had that tonight? I don't like to brag. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Looking good. Hey, let me get some of that as well. <laughs> Anyway, we got a great lineup for you tonight, and everybody's going to be talking sports, as we are, talking about that Cowboy Ooh. loss, right? And we're going to bring in our good friend Mark Colombo to help us do that. I don't think we're going to have a lot of good things to say about that game, Drew. No, I don't have to think stay so. stay tuned and see. We'll, we'll, we'll do our best and try to keep it clean, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Paul and Jennifer are going to cover entertainment, as always. And speaking of Mark Colombo, he's here with his buddy Corey Proctor, and they're going to do their normal beer segment but they also brought in a comedian because you know how dull those guys are oh, so yeah. they brought a comedian oh. to liven things up a little that's right we dan got dan danzy <laughs> in the house tonight <laughs> Woo. Woo. you've heard of him yeah he's gonna lighten <laughs> this thing up a little bit for us on the drew pearson show and then of course our social media director michael nass and all night long he's going to be trying to find the most valuable player coming out of that game last night you think there's any hope that we'll find an mvp a bright spot coming I, out of that game i think i'm gonna have to look towards special teams or gatorade guy <laughs> <laughs> whoa <laughs> well we'll see how we do because michael nass will be taking your votes via facebook twitter and all those other social media outlets connected to the drew pearson show so we got a great lineup tonight we're here at henry's tavern it's a beautiful evening uh, we've got a little hangover from that Cowboy loss, but they got the bye week coming up, so if they can handle it, I guess we can, right? I think we can. Let's thank a couple of people before we get started. Amen. Okay, Albertsons, the official grocer of the Drew Pearson Show. We want to thank them for their support. Also, Miss Carol Roberts, who heads up all the sports marketing associated with Albertsons, the official grocer of the Drew Pearson Show. Don't forget Best Buy, of course, one of our big sponsors, and we thank you very much. And also, uh, Dodge City of McKinney. Hey, yeah. I'm driving that brand new nice. 2014 Jeep, and man, I can't lean far enough to be <laughs> cool enough in that baby. That is sweet nice. car. I love it. Anyway, we also want to thank our host. Of course, Henry's Tavern. They are here right off the tollway at Legacy, the shops at Legacy. So come on by any Monday night. That's when we're here taping, and you're always welcome to join us. We'd love to have you. Amen. You got your watch on? I got it. It's all set. Oh, look. Did it's you see? It's about that time. It is that time. All right. The Drew Pearson Show is about to begin right about now. now. As the Drew Pearson Show continues to roll on right here at Henry's Tavern, we're going to roll right into our sports talk segment. Welcome, Miss Kelly Webster, back to the, uh, the set. Thank you. And also the great Mark Colombo. Welcome, Mark. Thanks, Drew. All right. What are we going to talk about in sports? Uh, the mm. Mavericks are rolling along at four and three. Mm. Nelson Cruz turned down 14 million from the he Rangers. Did. Do you believe that? <laughs> But nobody wants to talk about that th today, do they, Mark? Do they, Miss Kelly? No. We want to talk about the debacle in the Superdome, the Mercedes-Benz <laughs> Superdome. Last night, the Dallas Cowboys got blown away by the New Orleans Saints, a record 
number of yards against our defense, 600 and how many? 25. 25 yards. That eclipsed the old record of 623 yes. a couple weeks ago <laughs> against the Detroit Lions. And no offense, no nothing. Dez Bryant can't get loose. The defense they played on them. Just an unbelievable football game. Mark Kelly, I had no idea that that game would turn out that way. I actually gave our Cowboys a chance in that one. Thank you for owning up to that. <laughs> right I remember on. that prediction very well. The problem, one of the main problems that I have with the game is I don't understand where the Cowboys offense has gone. They are, for the most part, healthy. Miles Austin is the only offensive weapon that is sidelined with an injury. Tony Romo is there. DeMarco Murray is there. Des Bryant. Cole Beasley. We have a backup running back, Lance Dunbar. I, most of the offense is there. I understand that Brian Waters is off the offensive line for the rest of the season, and we knew that that was going to be a big loss. But why can this offense not move the ball down the field? They cannot convert a third down. They were 0 for 9 third down conversions. Yeah. They had nine first downs in the entire game. They had three first downs after the first half. Why can't the offense get something done? I get the defense is injured. We can talk about that in a minute. I just don't understand what the problem is with the Cowboys offense. I hate the play calling. I feel like there's no creativity. But on the other hand, as a fan, Mark, I don't know. Drew, am I missing something that maybe you guys can see that I'm not aware of? Well, no, you said it best creativity there is no creativity to this offense you know they they ran the ball pretty well but you see with the drew Brees type offense that to keep up with that it is almost ridiculous and not converting on third down that is the biggest issue right there you can run the ball well but if you don't convert on those third down opportunities you're just, they, they took the, they gave the ball to drew Brees way too many times and not converting at 0 for 9 on third down that is unheard of, especially with the Dallas Cowboys offense. Tony Romo is usually good in these situations. The receivers couldn't get open. They couldn't shake this Rob Bryan coverage. They didn't find ways to kind of get Des Bryant involved. Now, I don't know if this is a Des Bryant problem. I don't know. I, I don't know if he's capable of playing every single receiver spot. That is not a question for me. That may be more of a question for Drew, but I don't know where there's a lack of confidence in his ability to play a different position. You saw they put him in the slot for right. one play, and it, it, it was effective. <laughs> you figure they would try to do it more, but I don't know. We, we don't know at this point, and maybe Drew can enlighten us on that. Well, one thing wrong with the offense is that they didn't have the ball very often. Right. I mean, the uh, Saints controlled the ball for 40 minutes with the you know 40 first downs that they had in the football game and the success they were having on third down. So the offense didn't run many plays but still uh to answer your question mark yeah des Bryant, they just got to move them around they just like this is the same thing with calvin johnson andre johnson uh aj green all these great receivers they move them around so that they can't double them up the way they have been but the type of double coverage that rob ryan uh brought out last night against des Bryant with the double guys at the line dogging him off the line of scrimmage. I've never seen that anywhere in football, let alone in the NFL. So the Cowboys have to figure out how to get their ball, get the ball to their playmakers because I agree with both of you guys. Uh, there's no imagination in this offense. The play calling really, oh. Oh. really sucks. And if Dez is being <laughs> double teamed, DeMarco Murray has great hands. We've seen him catch out of the backfield. Cole Beasley has done a great job on third down conversions. Terrence Williams has also done a very good job. Yes, there were a couple of drops that affected the They're 0 for 9 in third drives. down. Nobody's yes. doing a good job on offense. But Stunning. as bad as the problems are with the offense, they're even worse with the defense. Oh. Am I right, Mark? <laughs> Let me tell you, I looked Man, at the, you I looked at the defense at, D, at one point. If you're an average fan, the only recognizable player on the defense was DeMarcus Ware, and he was playing with one leg. That's right. Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I'm looking at this defense, and they're just getting pushed around. People are pulling up with hamstrings. What's the issue with the hamstrings? It has to be a strength and conditioning issue. You can't tell me that all these hamstrings aren't an issue in the weight room. I mean, you, get, you can't go down with this many hamstring injuries. I mean, the players, are, are they in enough shape? 
Are they getting the proper work in the weight room? I don't know what the question is, Wait a but it's really going to hurt them. But their strength and conditioning trainer has like six Super six Bowl so, rings. I, Mike Wojcik is considered that. one of the best well, that's why I, that's why so I believe he's being problem? protected right he's, now. But I think, think he's, he's, being, he's got problem. six Super Bowl rings. I well, mean, uh, how, how do you argue that? Well, you I'm know, arguing the fact that hamstring non-contact football injuries are a direct correlation with the strength and conditioning coach. I've been around really great conditioning coach, Joe Jurassic being one of them. Uh, it, it, you have to be hands-on. And you know what? Maybe his times, it, it, maybe his times over. I don't know. But these hamstring injuries are unacceptable. Sean Lee, that is a huge loss. Yes. They cannot afford to lose Sean Lee in a non-contact football injury. Yeah, it is an issue. There's no question. But this issue is nothing new for the Cowboys. They've been having below the waist injuries for the last three or four years. And I think a lot of it has to do, you had to look at the bigger picture. I think a lot of it has to do with this collective bargaining agreement with the limitations they have on practice. True. I saw the Cowboys practice schedule last week. The longest they were on the field, the three days, was an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> you know, how are you gonna be able to play football and step up and be conditioned be loose and be ready to play if you're not practicing and you're not getting out there on the, on the uh, practice field. And that's the collective bargaining agreement. You know, unfortunately, that limits that. And guess what, guys? It's not just the Cowboys. It's all around the NFL. You see a lot of below-the-waist injuries nowadays in the NFL. But that's no excuse for the defense. They're still not playing great football or any kind of football. The tackling is atrocious. Where do we go, Kelly? Where do we go from here with the defense? I don't really think there is anywhere to go. If it's you not knew, like I was going to send you over to Valley Ranch. I'll go. <laughs> if you had willingly. Girl, I was waiting on the answer. I'll go willingly. <laughs> I was going to send it, ship it right over there. I don't. But, I don't think there's many answers to that question because yeah. you're using the backups to the backups already. These are the guys that we are now <laughs> seeing really. on the field some of which I wouldn't even be able to pick out in the locker room if they introduced themselves to me. So when you're missing Jason Hatcher, J.J. Wilcox, Mo Claiborne, Sean Lee is injured in the second quarter. Justin Durant yep. goes out with a hamstring injury in the third quarter. Sean Lee is going to miss three to four weeks. That's what they determined today with the MRI. So what is the fix? I, I believe I saw Kyle Bosworth, who normally plays special teams, moving over to linebacker. I, it, it is a crazy mess, but the biggest problem I have with all of this is Jerry Jones after the game publicly saying, you know, I don't know if I made a very good decision firing Rob Ryan and bringing in Monty Kiffin. I, I think I might regret that move. I think I regret it. I have a huge problem with that. What good on earth does that do for the owner to say that? Oh, now he's in touch? Now he feels like apologizing? Then I would like for him to apologize for being the general manager for all these years. Yeah, he needs to apologize for a lot of things. <laughs> and the uh, first thing he needs to do is stay out of the locker room right after a game. But here's the cure for this Cowboy football team right now. It's coming up this weekend. It's, it's the bye week. <laughs> and that's exactly. what they need more than anything. And then after that, they can regroup and then they get the New York Giants and then roll in on Thanksgiving Day against the Oakland Raiders. So uh, do you think at 5-5 five and five, uh, that they can hold on and do enough, Mark, to, to win that NFC East as we head into the final half of the season? Listen, this year is the best year for them to have a chance having a subpar year. You know, anything's possible. The problem is now you get the Giants in Philadelphia coming on a little bit. I do worry this bye week is crucial. Players need to get healthy. They need to get back to playing fundamental football. And the only way this team is going to win is if that offense carries them and they cannot be performing the way they're performing lately. Time to go back to the playbooks and figure out something else because it's not working. Listen, I wouldn't give the Cowboys offense my purse to carry right now. I'm not picking them to win the division. I'm not picking them to do anything because... At 5-5, five and five, I don't see any improvement, and I feel like the only direction they're headed is down or backwards. So I, I'm, off, I'm off the bandwagon until I see something. But I am picking them to win the bye. I do pick this team to win the bye. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> Kelly left to go out on the limb right here on the Drew Pearson Show. Hey, nobody cares about the Mavs. Nobody cares about the Rangers. This is football time of the year. 
and it's all about cowboy football talk. Mark Colombo, Kelly Webster, thanks for being part of Sports Talk right here in the Drew Pearson Show, and we'll continue right after this. Welcome back to the Drew Pearson Show. I'm Mark Colombo, and I am here with comedian Dan Danzi, and he's from Beaumont, Texas, and he's right here with us on the Drew Pearson Show. Dan, how are we doing? Doing good. Thank you, Mark, for having me. Thank you to the Drew Pearson staff for having me. This is an awesome experience. It's really I think great. I should sit down now. You should probably okay. sit down. You look way too tall. It's making me scared, making me a little bit scared, a little intense. So what, what got you into comedy, Dan? Uh, I was always into theater when I was little, and I went and saw my first stand-up show when about when I was like 17, and I liked it better because you could say your own thing, you know? If, the, if you're in a Neil Simon play and the line's not funny, it's Neil Simon's fault, you know? <laughs> yeah. But when I'm doing my stand-up and a line's not funny, it's my fault, and, which leads to more drinking, and I like drinking, so... You, you do like drinking. It gave me an excuse to drink, pretty much. So Very that's good. why I kept doing it. Very cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's interesting. So, uh, what was your what's your favorite gig to play? Uh, here in Dallas, or just general? Just here in Dallas. We, we, in we Dallas. like it right here in the Drew Pierce store, right here in the DFW area. What's your favorite gig? I really do like the Addison Improv. The Addison Improv it's like a sold out show every night. Packed crowds are just ready to laugh. They drink. They just love laughing. Uh, the comics that you work with are really nice and really hilarious. And the staff, the staff, it has the best staff in DFW. They're just nice and they're willing to just drop everything to help you and it's an awesome, awesome place. Go to the Addison Improv next time you can because it's the best comedy club in Texas, in my opinion. You heard it from Dan. Get on down to the Improv in Addison. Okay, so we talked about your favorite gig. Okay. Let's talk about your worst. Ooh. <laughs> okay, the worst gig I ever had to do it was like in Beaumont, Texas, we had our own comedy club. And when that shut down, we were forced to do this comedy night at a laser tag place. <laughs> All right? And this was like 8 o'clock p.m. Uh, that's the show start. And they didn't have alcohol. It was like a malt shop in the front. So all you could really do was, like, drink milkshakes and eat hot dogs. And that is not fuel for a comedy show. You need alcohol and you just need, you know, just nighttime. That's what you need. And... So we're doing our show and people are just coming in to do laser tag and there's kids and they're getting mad because we're cussing. And what ended up happening, we stopped doing the comedy show after somebody said the F word. Um, and, and pretty much after it was all said and done with, we went and played laser tag. That was pretty much it. That's the only thing we could do after the comedy show. We just played laser tag. And I won a couple of those laser tags, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, I hid very well in the laser <laughs> tag arena. I can hide like a, you wouldn't believe. I, can, I can't uh, do that. You can't hide. No, you're like 6'8". I'm, I'm you're like commando, Shrek size. Though, I'm telling you. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 I can get skinny every once in a while. Well, oh, not too much. Yeah, not, no. no. But you could, you could, no, you can't. No, I was I thinking, you could probably hide under an excursion or something at least <laughs> as big as you are. All right. So I, where, where can we find you performing next? Uh, the Amsterdam Comedy Festival, right. November 22nd through the 24th at the Amsterdam Bar. Three straight nights of comedy all start at 10 p.m. It's featuring 30 comics, 30 of the best comics in DFW. You can also see me at the Quixotic Theater, December 19th in Deep Ellum off Elm Street. And for my Beaumont family, I'm calling them family because that's where I'm from, you can see me at LOL Comedy Club on Crockett Street, December 21st at 8 p.m. Very cool. Well, you heard it. Dan, it was a pleasure having you on the Dude, show. It's been a pleasure just sitting right here next to you. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Look at the, the size difference. <laughs> well, we'll see you later in the beer segment, right? Oh, He's I can't up wait for the that. Segment. It's going to be, uh, that will be funny. But go out and see Dan. He's hysterical. So look forward to more from him later in the beer segment. Beer right segment. here on the Drew Pearson Show. Coming up next. All right, welcome back to the Drew Pearson Show. This week on our entertainment segment, we have a new film that I'm really excited about. You guys are going to love this one just in time for the Oscar season, and it's called Nebraska. Now, the film is by Alexander Payne, who directed great films like Sideways. This is his new film, and it stars Bruce Dern, a wonderful character actor who finally gets a chance, I think, at an Oscar run, and Will Forte. Isn't he one of those uh, guys off Saturday Night Live? He is. He's on Saturday Night Live. 
extremely funny guy. However, in this one, not funny at not all. Not funny at all, not really? Not funny at all. He's got to be the straight man in this one. Wow, so okay. all of those wacky skits that you've seen, and when you've seen him, and it's the crazed Ted Turner on Conan O'Brien, nothing like that. Wow, that's going to be very interesting. Well, and he's not really like that in person either, as most comedians aren't. So right. I got to catch up with him at the W Hotel right downtown in Victory Park and uh, talk a little bit about this film, which is a very touching, wonderful film in glorious black and white as well. Black and white. I love black and white. Yeah. So. And uh, the film is called Nebraska. It's in theaters this Friday. Let's take a look at the interview with Will Forte. Woody hit it rich, and I don't see any of it. That would be wrong. Are you threatening my family? Everybody's saying how Woody grants the millionaire. That's no big deal. No big deal. Jeez. Million here, a million there. Well, the newspaper's going to do a big write-up on you. Right? Woody didn't win anything. You're a damn liar. Hey, 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 hey. Come on, have a beer with your old man. Be somebody. Congratulations on the film. We're really excited about this. Uh, for you, this is such a different role than what we're used to seeing you in. So this yes. must have been so much fun for you. It has been so much fun. I mean, I, I will admit that in the beginning it was uh, really intimidating and scary uh, just to it was just a, a, something I had not experienced is, is this kind of different type of acting. So, But, but uh, Alexander Payne, the director, and Bruce Dern uh, who plays my dad, they, they were so good to me and, and made me feel really comfortable right off the bat so it made it very easy. But yeah, the very early going I was ugh, just didn't want to ruin their movie. <laughs> well, I say it was fun, but I mean, it was actually, you had to be the straight man, which you're not really used to that much, right? Yeah, no, I'm usually the uh, uh, weirdo, some absurd character or, or creepy dude <laughs> with a mustache and, and members only jacket. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was so fun, though, to, to get to to do this, I, I just never thought I'd get a, a chance to to be a part of something like this. So it, it just really is is has been the the best experience. Yeah. Well, and you said Alexander helped you get out of your head. And yeah. what, what does that mean to you? Well, I I just overthink everything in my life. I I uh, you know so I I can find something to to get nervous about or to to just overthink and and he very early on and, and and so yeah I would overthink uh what am I supposed to do with the character am I supposed to do this am I supposed to do that and you know there was this uh as I read the script for the first time it was it seemed very clear the script was so wonderfully written that it was kind of clear what I was supposed to do um with the character and then over time you just I would just overthink everything and think, oh, maybe I'm supposed to play it more like this or like this. And he just had a way of just peeling away that insecurity stuff and and, uh, and just making me realize, oh, don't worry about it. Just remember your instincts and follow those instincts. And, it, you know, it, it, I, it was, just became a, a very fun, fun process. Do you think there's a moment that you'll always remember on the set that'll just stick with you for years from now? Yeah, there was a uh, toward the end uh, a really wonderful moment that Bruce and I had. We, we just got to be really close. I, I I don't want to share too much, but but it really like the the relationship that that you see in the movie is very similar to what actually happened to us in real life, and we had this real moment of of bonding toward the end that that I will not forget. That's great. Well, now the show is the Drew Pearson show and Drew famously caught the Hail Mary catch and I think everyone has a Hail Mary moment in their life where they just kind of had to go for it and weren't sure if it was going to work out, but it did. What do you suppose that was for you? The Hail Mary moment? Oh my God. Uh, 
I'll tell you, it was probably when I just made the decision to, to, I was working at a brokerage firm, uh, knew that it wasn't the right thing and was nervous about trying comedy out. Uh, you know, for, for some reason to me, it felt like to, to say that, to tell my friends and family that I wanted to, to try out comedy made it seem like I was bragging that I felt like I could that I was funny enough to make it in comedy so it was really hard because I, I, I don't know it's, it's really I don't know if I'm explaining it right but, but I finally just said I gotta try this out and, and from that moment forward after I started this place called The Groundlings mm -hmm. uh, it, it just seemed like the right thing like even if I had never had any any success in comedy it just was I, I knew immediately it was the right thing for me because I, I felt so happy doing it how about that, that I think you're going really to want to see it right yeah I absolutely do well good I, you know I know that you're expecting him to be funny you're expecting a crazy face yeah. but it's not like that for this one and good for him too because it's hard enough for those guys especially a lot of the Saturday Night Live guys take them to seriously in a, an actual real role that's not a comedian role so that's really cool absolutely so look for him at Oscar time we hope that he gets his best supporting actor nomination so <laughs> okay so we hope that he gets a best supporting actor nomination for Nebraska so go check it out it's in theaters this Friday. And up next, we're gonna have the one and only Silver Gun with us. They've got a new singer, Jacob Henderson, and of course, our music director, Darren D. Paul Wise. So stay tuned right here for more with Silver Gun and their new song, Don't Forget About Me. All right, welcome back to the Drew Pearson Show. Right now, tonight, we have something very, very special for you. We have the band Silver Gun, which features the new singer, Jacob Henderson, and Darren D. Paul Wise, our musical director. Now, they have a new song for you that we know that you're going to love. It's called Don't Forget About Me. Let's check it out right here, an exclusive only on The Drew Pearson Show. <laughs> When you drink whiskey, think about me You get so blind that you can't see When you get so high, you can't come down Think of my face and I'll come around Don't you forget about me Don't you forget about me I'll be there when you draw the line And I got your back every time Don't you forget about me Sometimes the rain has to fall I can feel the pain inside of the cell I'll be there on your darkest nights You know I'm gonna make everything alright So don't you lose it, lose it all You got my number, just make the call And I'll be there in the nick of time You can tell me your story why we drink that wine But don't forget about me Don't you forget about me Don't you forget about me When you're down so long Stab you in the back with their lies and left you here with no goodbyes. I can look you straight in the air, cause I'll be here to the day you die. Never forget you, and that's all I they can't take this no matter how they are. Don't you forget about me. Don't you forget about me. Ciao. 
forget about me Don't you forget about me Or I'll be there when you draw the line At your back every time All right, Ooh. there it is. Unbelievable. You hear that, Paul? Absolutely. I'm really excited that that is a Drew Pearson show exclusive. In fact, it's even more of a Drew Pearson exclusive than we know right now. Yeah, because that is the uh, first original music score for the Hail Mary movie starring Roger Staubach and Drew Pearson. That's right. Can Written by D. Paul right here, man. There it is. And you could feel the love and the passion and... Everything it takes to catch a Hail Mary, written in that song, man. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you and uh, the guy that could make it come to life is right here, Jacob Henderson. Yeah, right he here, is. part now, of the Drew Pearson show. Now, Drew, you probably remember Jacob. Earlier this year, we had a great benefit show up at Dodge City in McKinney, and uh, Jacob was with us, but in a different capacity, right? Yep, yep. I was uh, definitely with another team, so to speak. Yeah, well, we are uh, we got a good GM here. We go out and get the best players <laughs> and make them part of the Drew Pearson Show team. Absolutely. And welcome aboard, Jacob, man. Glad you to be make here. us uh, even that much better. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. And we got to know from our man himself, Darren D. Paul Wise, a man of few words, but a man of great words, we've got to know a little bit about the song, like where this came from. And were you thinking about the Hail Mary movie? Yeah. The song is all about relationships with people, and uh, that's that's about it. It's about relationships with people and and life. So that covers it. I told you a man of few words, but a man of great words. Amen. There he is, Darren D. Fall Wise. You, How about you, Jacob? What do you have to say about the song? Uh, you know, I, I'm pretty fresh to the fr to the band actually, and uh, you know, as I as I like to say it in football terms, because that's what we're all here for. You know, every now and then you get traded from the Giants to the Denver Broncos, so to speak, as of right now. Uh, you know, going from, from a, you know, okay team to a great team. And uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be here. Uh, you know, Tom and, and Darren sought me out. And uh, I know those guys. Uh, Darren's a great guitar player. Tom is a fantastic manager. And uh, I'm, really, I'm really pretty stoked. And uh, we got a lot of great things ahead of us. Right on, right on. Absolutely, and most importantly, we got the seal of approval from the man himself, the original 88, Mr. Drew Pearson. Yeah, let's crank it up again. Give me a little more of that. Give me All a right, little more of that. Come bit. on. Yeah. yeah. Give me a little more of that. Don't you forget about me. Don't you forget about me. Or I'll be there when you draw the line And I got your back every time Don't you forget about me Yeah, that's the kind of song you'll be singing as you take it home right here at Henry's Tavern. Woo! We'll be right back. Hi, this is Paul Southman from the Drew Pearson Show, and we are here at Henry's Tavern in Plano, Texas. And I just pulled up in the 2014 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Sport. Let's look at this beautiful exterior. We've got a flame red clear coat. We got bifunction halogen projector black headlamps, sport tail lamps, dual rear exhaust with bright tips, 20 inch polished aluminum wheels. 
a 5.7 liter Hemi V8 with eight speed torque flight automatic transmission. And look at that beautiful interior. We have heated and ventilated black leather trim bucket seats, heated leather wrapped steering wheel with audio controls, a Uconnect 8.4 AM with touchscreen navigation, a backup camera, HD radio, and one year free Sirius satellite radio. There's also voice recognition and Bluetooth streaming audio. And I always love the rotary shifter. That's a feature they should have come up with years ago. This is a beautiful car. This is the 2014 Ram 1500 Crew Cab Sport. And you can find it at Dodge City of McKinney, dodgecitymckinney.net. Oh, yeah. We're having a good time. We're having a great time at Henry's Tavern right here at the Shops of Legacy in Plano. And, man, we are rolling tonight on YouTube, man. This is being taped live, but hey, we're also uh, Facebook, Twitter. You know this guy. He's here every week. Michael Nass, our social media director, and he's been taking your questions all night long, but also he's been taking your votes as the, not taking, but tallying your votes as they come in for the MVP of last night's game against the Dallas Cowboys and the New Orleans Saints. Did anybody really vote on that, Michael Ness? Well, there, were a vote, there was a vote for the clock operator. <laughs> I, heard the cheerleaders, the I heard the cheerleaders couldn't yeah. even get a vote last night. But uh, actually, Dwayne Harris got the most votes, and I yeah. guess he is deserving. Yeah, he is. Uh, he's, uh, if, I tell you what, if everybody played like Dwayne Harris week in and week out, we would not be sitting at 5-5 five and five wondering, scratching our heads when it's not itching, running what's going on. You know what I mean? Nice head, by the way. <laughs> right here. See that? Anyway, uh, Michael, uh, what kind of questions you've been taking? So Dwayne Harris is our MVP. Yes. yes. All right, Dwayne, congratulations, number 17. You deserve it. So what kind of questions they've been? I can only imagine well, we got what some we've good been ones. getting in tonight. Uh, Clifton Silva on Twitter asks, how about shopping Romo or where for draft picks in the offseason? Romo or where? Who's going to take them? You know, they're old, they're up there in age. You know, there's a young man's league in the NFL now. And uh, there are not many players in the league 30 and over. So those guys, you can see with where he's breaking down a little with the consistent number of injuries he's had. And Romo, you know, he's not having his greatest year either after he got all that money. So if you can work a deal for that, see the general manager of the Cowboys. Everybody knows who that is, <laughs> right? No more Herschel Walker type trades. Huh? No, nothing out there this this time around. Uh, Jason Boom on Twitter asks, uh, "Why can't the Cowboys' offense use Des Bryant more effectively?" Good question, Jason. That's a question I've been asking myself all season long. They got to get more creative. You know, they got to give Des a chance. You got to move him around. You know, Michael. Back in the day when I was playing with the Cowboys, you know, my second year I made All Pro, and right away I've been getting double coverage. And the way Coach Landry and Staubach combated that, they moved me around. There are times I would line up in the backfield, line up at tight end, doing all this shifting, going in motion across the backfield, short motion, long motion. And all these things were designed and calculated to help me get open now and to beat the double coverages that were coming. And I see a lot of other teams in the league using this same strategy, like Detroit with Calvin Johnson, like uh, Cincinnati with A.J. Green, Houston with Andre Johnson, uh, Arizona with Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Chicago with Brandon Marshall. So the Cowboys just need to get creative uh, in finding a way to get Dez the football. You've got to throw the football to Dez more than two times in a game, Jason. That just ain't enough. Well, I don't know how many times I see in games where just Drew Brees, perfect example, just putting up a 50-yard bomb and, and as you can see, the DBs overplay it. And you yeah, you got to give them a chance. Cause it it, you say 50-yard bomb, but they get a 50-50 chance yeah. of either catching it or getting a pass interference call or something. So, yeah, yeah got to put the ball up to Dez because when you throw it to 88, good things happen. All right, and our final question comes from Ace Antonio Hall on Twitter, and he says, uh, would you have Garrett calling plays again? Uh, I think it might be an improvement. <laughs> God, I yeah. would th never thought I would say that. Yeah. You know, but uh, Bill Callahan, I guess he's had some issues when he was 
calling plays in Oakland. He wasn't very uh, imaginative or innovative when he was uh, at the University of Nebraska. Uh, ask Tim Brown, you know, how they felt about him when he was calling plays for the Raiders back when Brown was playing there. They weren't very happy with him. So I don't know if this is right for him. I have a problem, Mike, Michael, with an offensive line coach calling plays. Yeah. They're just not creative. How can they be creative? They never ran a pass route. They don't even know how to draw up pass routes. So anyway, uh, hopefully they'll get that corrected and things will work out for the Cowboys. And hopefully they'll end up in the playoffs and all this talk will be mute. Well, that wraps it up for our questions on social media today. Remember, each week, vote for the Dallas Cowboy MVP for the Drew Pearson Show at, with hashtag DPP, DPS MVP. And follow the Drew Pearson Show, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube. Well, we found the one bright spot coming out of that game last night. The Drew Pearson Most Valuable Player, voted on by you, the fan. Let's give it to number 17, Dwayne Harris, Two right? Two-time winner now. Two-time winner. He's, yeah, he's the man. Well, anyway, that's give him the MVP. Michael Nass is done. I'm done. We're going to wrap up another edition of the Drew Pearson Show, coming to you live again from Henry's Tavern. Give it up. We'll see you next week.